So the photoelectric effect proves that one electron can absorb one photon of energy. The energy of a photon, I'm going to put E gamma. Gamma is the general symbol for a photon. Doesn't necessarily mean a gamma photon. Photon energy equals H F. F being frequency and H being Planck's constant. That's 6.63 times 10 to the minus 34 joule seconds. Now in the photoelectric effect, we had electrons in metals absorbing photons but it doesn't have to be a metal. It can be any electron. So I'm going to draw an atom here. I'm going to draw the nucleus, which is positive. Then I'm going to draw just one electron in a shell around the nucleus. Now when a photon comes in and it's absorbed by an electron, one of two things can happen. If it gets more energy, and the electron becomes more excited and it jumps to a shell that is further away from the nucleus. We can say that it's gone up an energy level. And we call this excitation. Photon is absorbed, electron goes up an energy level. Now what we're going to find out a little bit later on is that electrons can only be in certain energy levels. Another thing can happen as well though. If the photon has loads of energy, so it's got a higher frequency, then the electron has way too much energy to go to the next energy level or an energy level above that. It actually just completely moves away from the atom. What are we left with? We're left with an ion. This is ionization. Ionization is what happens when an electron is given enough energy by a photon, or it can be given energy by another free electron and it jumps out of the atom completely. And we're left with a free electron and an ion left. Obviously more energy is needed for ionization than excitation. Now this electron here doesn't like being in the energy level above where it's supposed to be usually. So after it's absorbed the energy and gone up, it will come straight back down. When this electron does go back to its normal energy level, energy is released. And we call this de-excitation, sometimes also called relaxation. The electron returns to energy level and a photon is emitted. So with excitation, a photon can come in, be absorbed by an electron. It can go up an energy level comes straight back down and by doing so it releases its own photon. So let's draw our atom again. Now this is where our electron usually is but it could also be if it has enough energy in any of these shells or energy levels above but they are very specific to an atom. What we're going to do is take a snapshot of this. We're just going to take a slice of this and we're going to blow it up here. So instead of drawing shells, we're actually just going to draw our energy levels like this. So here's our electron in its normal shell. We're going to call this its ground state. That's when it has no energy or rather no more energy than usual. It's all relative. Now we're going to measure these in electron volts. Now remember that one electron volt is equals to 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 joules. It's just an easier number to deal with because when we're talking about individual electrons energies, we're talking very small numbers of joules. So we deal with electron volts instead. Now when a photon comes in, the electron can jump to one of these energy levels. Now I can tell you that these energy levels here are five electron volts, seven electron volts and eight electron volts. This eight electron volts here though, once it reaches this point, it's out of the atom. So that's when it's actually being ionized. So if this photon, and the energy of this photon is HF, Planck's constant times the frequency, if the photon had eight electron volts, that's eight lots of these, or more to give the electron, then the electron would jump all the way up past this eight electron volts and it would escape the atom. The atom has now been ionized. 
but we're not going to think about that for now. We're just going to think about what would happen if it didn't go quite to that point. If the energy of the photon was equals to three electron volts, it's not enough energy to get the electron to its next energy level. So it's not like the photon is absorbed and the electron goes part way to this five electron volts. It can't do that. Instead, the photon would just pass straight through. So that means that it's not absorbed. But if it did have exactly, let's say seven electron volts, it's enough to get it to its third energy level. We give these, by the way, numbers N, one is the ground state, then N2, then N3. So here we go. The electron has absorbed the photon and it goes up to this energy level here. Hurrah, it's absorbed a photon of the right amount of energy because it has just the right frequency and it's gone up to that third energy level. We said that electrons like being at their ground state. They want to come back to here as soon as possible. Now on the way back down from here, the electron now has a choice. Either it can go straight back down to here and it can release a photon because it has to get rid of energy and that's going to be a photon that has seven electron volts of energy. That makes sense. But it has another option as well. So it can go from N3 to N1, or it can stop halfway. It can go to here and then down to here. So it's gone from N equals three to N equals two to N equals one. So it's gone from the third energy level to the second, and then back to the ground state there. Both of these will release photons. What's the energy of this photon going to be? Well, it's gone from seven electron volts to five electron volts. So this photon is gonna have two electron volts of energy. So it's gonna be 3.2 times 10 to the minus 19 joules. This one here is going to release a photon that has five electron volts of energy. So it's gonna be eight times 10 to the minus 19 joules. So when an electron absorbs some energy from a photon, it only absorbs one photon. But on its way down, it has choices. It can go straight to the bottom, or it can go to energy levels in between, then fall to the bottom from there. Even though we're absorbing one photon here, one type of photon, how many photons can be emitted? One, two, three. So we're gonna have various colors of photons and light being emitted when this electron goes from the third energy level down to its ground state. What about if I wanted to find out the wavelength of this photon here? Let's have a look. We know that the energy of a photon is equals to HF. From the wave equation, we know the V or C is F lambda, frequency times wavelength. So that means that frequency is equals to speed of light divided by the wavelength. Pop this in here, and we end up with energy equals hc over lambda. Rearrange this, and we end up with wavelength equals Planck's constant times the speed of light divided by the energy of the photon. Give that a go if you want. Pause the video if you feel like it. So this is gonna be 6.63 times 10 to the minus 34, times three times 10 to the eight, divided by well, it's five electron volts, that's five times this many joules. Whenever we do any calculations, we always have to use joules. We never put electron volts straight into an equation. That's gonna give us a wavelength of 2.5 times 10 to the minus seven meters, or about 250 nanometers, pretty much visible light. So that does mean that atoms only absorb certain wavelengths of light. So you might see a diagram like this, and you'll see all the colors in the rainbow, going from red all the way to blue. And because we know that electrons can only absorb certain wavelengths and certain frequencies of photons, we get these black lines appearing on here and it's gonna be different for every single atom and molecule in the world. So this is an absorption spectrum. So in other words, all of these wavelengths pass through, 
but these black lines show the ones that are absorbed. So you can deduce energy levels from those. We also have an emission spectrum as well. Other way around this time, the whole thing will be black, apart from a few colored lines that show what frequencies and wavelengths are emitted from something. I've drawn an absorption spectrum and emission spectrum for two different elements here, but if we did have an absorption spectrum and an emission spectrum, would they be exactly the same? Well, no, they wouldn't be. You would expect more lines on the emission spectrum. Why is that? Well, it's because all electrons, when they absorb, they have to start at the ground state and go up to a specific energy level. On the way back down, though, they can take any route they want. So there's always going to be a greater number of different wavelengths that could be emitted that could be absorbed. You take multiple routes back to the ground state. One place that we see excitation and de-excitation happening is in a fluorescent tube. What we have in here is low pressure mercury gas. And what we do is we fire electrons from one end to the other. The electrons collide with the mercury atoms and they excite the electrons like we saw earlier. Or we could draw it like this. The electrons de-excite, the problem is, is that they emit UV photons. It's a high frequency. What do these photons do? These UV photons are absorbed by the coating on the outside of the tube. So you have this coating. It's all around the outside. If it wasn't for this coating, if you scrape off the coating, off a fluorescent tube, you're just getting UV photons coming straight out. But if we have this coating, the UV photons are absorbed by the coating and we have excitation again. What do they do in turn? When they de-excite, they emit visible photons, therefore lighting up a room that they're in. So that's how a fluorescent tube works. Notice that the excitation that we get to begin with isn't due to the absorption of photons. It's an electron coming in, whacking into another electron. That electron goes off because it's still got loads of energy, but it's given some of its energy to this electron, raising it an energy level. To get rid of that energy, it releases this high frequency UV photon. That's absorbed by the coating. That then releases visible light photons to light up a room. So that's electron energy levels. If you think I've missed anything or have any questions, please put it in a comment down below. And don't forget to leave a like if you found this helpful. And I'll see you next time.